I'd like to welcome you to our annual Foundation's Chief's Breakfast. We want to, usually it's Myron, our president, that's standing up here, but Myron's had a heart attack, and so we're giving him his best wishes for a speedy recovery. Would you all stand for the presentation of the colors? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which we stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with justice for all. You may be seated. I'd like to ask Reverend Bob Hoyt to come up for our invocation. Welcome to Pasadena Nazarene Church, or known as PASNAZ. We welcome you and glad to have you here. Let's pray. We are thankful that we can come and spend time together to celebrate all the accomplishments uh, people have done for this year. But we thank you most of all that we have a place where we can come and be together in freedom. And appreciation for the fact that you love us more than we love ourselves. We thank you for this uh, assembly. Thank you for what it means to our lives and to each other. But we thank you most of all just for the privilege of being together in your name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Hoyt. I'd like to ask Sandy Greenstein to come up. Sandy's our acting president um, in Myron's absence. And again, thank you all for being here with us this morning. Uh, so many in the communities across the nation are examining the police. And this is a time uh, when we can really recognize so much positive work that they do, much of which goes above and beyond the call of their duties. Um, I also want to especially thank Susan Kinney and Castle Press for all of the work that she has done as chair of this event. <clears throat> and Marilyn Buchanan for the centerpieces. Um, we have some elected officials with us this morning, and my eyes are not very good. Um, I think State Assembly Member Chris Holden is here or will be here. Uh, we have City Manager Michael Beck and Mayor Terry Tornick over at this table. I, sh I should have said those in reverse order, excuse me. And uh, City Attorney Michelle Bontorais is here as well. Also Vice Mayor Jean Masuda and his wife Joanne. And I, I think this... And, we, and the uh, police uh, department especially wants us to recognize uh, 
LA Sheriff's Department Captain Reed and Pasadena Superior Judge Mavis, who are regular attendees at this event <laughs> and strong supporters of our local police department. Is there anyone that I missed? If there's someone that I missed, stand up and make yourself known. <laughs> okay. It's very difficult. All right. Um, the next uh, order of the agenda is our Malekian Outstanding Youth Award. And to present that award is our longstanding board member. She's been a member of the board for over 14 years, Angela Hakot. Thank you and good morning everyone. I am Angela Hockett and I am the chairman of the awards committee for the Place Foundation. And as many of you may be aware, especially if you've been attending for a number of years, for the past six years we have awarded a Bernard K. Malecki an Outstanding Youth Award. And this was an annual scholarship that we established in honor of our prior police chief, Bernard Malekian, and it honors an outstanding high school student based upon a number of criteria that includes, among other things, the youth has been a major influence in his or her peer group to be law-abiding, the youth has performed an important community service, the youth has overcome an adversity and has positively turned his or her life around, and or the youth has been an active volunteer with law enforcement or has aspirations of a career in law enforcement. It is my pleasure this morning to introduce our 2015 Bernard K. Malecki and Outstanding Youth Award recipient. And I'm going to have Riley Clark come forward, please, and then Chief Sanchez will also join us on stage. Riley Christine Clark is a senior at Westridge School for Girls in Pasadena, where she has excelled not only scholastically, but also in extracurricular activities. She has an unweighted 3.941 GPA, is an AP scholar, a member of the Cum Laude Society, and she has excelled in the National Latin Exam, achieving Magna Cum Laude Awards, among many others. Riley is interested in pursuing a college major in sociology or criminology, and has a career goal of working with the FBI. She attended the Forensic Science Institute at Georgetown University during the summer of 2013, which no doubt fueled her interest as a fan of the television program CSI and a Nancy Drew detective novel enthusiast. This past summer, Riley attended the National Student Leadership Conference Psychology Neurology Program at American University, where she learned about various psychological and neurological conditions. She's been managing editor and editor-in-chief of her high school yearbook. She served as JV basketball co-captain and co-captain of the freshman sophomore volleyball team. And Riley has also volunteered over 50 hours at Huntington Memorial Hospital in her spare time. She is active on the Westridge Service Committee, providing tours of campus on open house days and fielding questions to prospective students and their parents. Riley has also served as head of the Skittles Affinity and the Gay Straight Alliance at Westridge. In heading these groups, Riley has demonstrated her openness, sensitivity, and genuine concern for others, and is committed to finding a safe place for all students on campus, regardless of their race, sexual orientation, or religious beliefs. Riley's parents are Linda and Doug Clark, who are with us today. And also celebrating is the Director of College Counseling at Westridge, Lindsay O'Grady, who nominated Riley for this award. And it is now my pleasure to introduce Chief Sanchez, who will be presenting the award. And I will read the award, and he will be presenting the award to Riley. This award also, there's a plaque, and it also is accompanied by a $1,000 scholarship to Riley. Wow. <laughs> and the award reads as follows. Let's do this. Angela, why don't you I'll, this I'll, I'll just quickly read the award. It's Bernard K. Malecki, an Outstanding Youth Award, presented to Riley Christine Clark in recognition of exemplary and passionate service to the Pasadena community and your peers, awarded by the Pasadena Police Foundation on this eighth day of October, 2015.
And now Riley would like to say a few words. Hello, my name is Riley Clark and I'm a senior at Western School for Girls. I would like to begin by thanking the Pasadena Police Foundation for this amazing honor of receiving the Bernard K. Malekian Outstanding Youth Award. I cannot thank you enough for presenting me with such an honor. Furthermore, I would like to thank my college counselor, Lynn O'Grady, for recommending this award to me. And I'd also like to thank my parents for being incredibly supportive through the college process. To, little, to give a little information about myself, I began Westridge at the age of nine. From the start of my education here, I knew that I loved school. As a little fourth grader, I eagerly bounded up the stairs with my rolling backpack each morning to take my seat among 35 other classmates. Flash forward eight years, and though I no longer run to each of my classes, I still enjoy going to school. <laughs> I love being able to learn new things, whether that be solving a new type of math problem in AP calculus, or learning in AP art history about how the ancient Greeks built their temples to coincide with octaves and perfect fifths. I especially love my ethics class because we get to learn about the teachings of ancient philosophers such as Aristotle and Plato and apply them to current social issues. My love for school has accumulated into a recent award from last year where I was selected to be a member of the Cum Laude Honor Society, an honor only given to the top 10% of the junior class. Though I love academics, I don't simply focus on them, for I'm a basketball player as well. My career began when, unbeknownst to me, my dad signed me up to play YMCA basketball at the age of eight. I begrudgingly went along with it, but soon realized that I loved the sport. Not only was it fun to play, but I also realized I enjoyed the camaraderie I felt with my teammates. This is still true at Westridge, where I play on the JV basketball team and lead my teammates as captain. I've realized through basketball that it's not simply about winning or losing, but rather about the friendships formed along the way and the familial bond we all share. And for that reason of working as a team, or at least conversing with one, I hope to one day join the FBI and work with a team of individuals who will stop criminals. Ever since watching my first episode of Criminal Minds in eighth grade, I have wanted to study, I have, not, I have wanted to not only study human behavior, but also join the FBI. I have always loved analyzing human behavior, so I plan on having a career where I can do this and possibly help people along the way. As a result, I have decided to major in either sociology or criminology. I have even taken a, summer, I've even taken a few summer courses at different universities in regards to these majors. At Georgetown freshman year, I took a course on forensic science where I was fortunate enough to hear from police detectives, FBI agents, and a military medical coroner. We even got to visit the Secret Service building in DC. My interest was further sparked when my group at the program solved, criminals, cr solved crimes based on a fictitious scenario that our instructor provided. I knew then that this was a potential career path for me. As a result of these experiences, I know now that I want to join the FBI. I'm not sure what specific area, but I hope one day after college, I will have a position in it. And with the Police Foundation awarding me this honor, I know I will be one step closer to achieving my goal. Thank you. Thank you, Riley. I think you can see why she was our awardee this year. Well done. It's my pleasure now to introduce the man that we're all waiting to hear from. Chief Sanchez will be addressing us on the cha challenges facing law enforcement. Chief? Thanks, Emma. Good morning, everybody. Well, I was uh, actually told that you're all here for the breakfast, so if you're waiting for, uh, for my words, uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a long morning. Well, we do promise to get you out here uh, on time. Challenges facing law enforcement. Uh, it's a fascinating topic, maybe uh, one that Riley can uh, study as she continues in her endeavors in sociology and uh, psychology and, and criminology. But before we look at the uh, issues that face a law enforcement agency locally uh, or nationally, we have to look at first, what is a law enforcement officer? What is a peace officer? Well, the truth of the matter is in contemporary law, inform contemporary law enforcement, uh, they're part social worker, uh, they're part peacekeeper, they're part mitigator, they're part problem solver. Truth of the matter is, is that every time that there is a serious issue or one that's not quite an emergency, 
Pasadena Police Department and their colleagues nationwide are called. There's an inter interesting duality with law enforcement uh, in that 50% of the people are elated that we arrived. And of course, the other 50% are not so, not, not, not so happy. <laughs> but nevertheless, every day, without fanfare or drama, passing and police officers arrive at their duty station and discharge their duties with professionalism, with compassion, and with a focus to making our community better. Currently, we look at about 120 applications in order to hire one passing a police officer. And despite recently some of the transfers uh, that we have experienced uh, of our, our officers leaving uh, our organization, we are elated at the opportunity uh, and uh, the uh, future of this great department because we are hiring exceptional people. We hire people that have respect for themselves and for the community they serve. We hire people who are courageous, physical courage, and equally important, moral courage to do the right thing. The truth is, is that oftentimes supervisors can't be with the officers. And every day that they're on patrol, they are reflective of me, they are reflective of my senior staff, they're reflective of my boss, Michael Beck, the mayor, and others. We are local government. We hire officers who are honest and have demonstrated a history of honesty. We ask difficult questions during the background process so that we can ensure that we're getting some of the best, if not the best, applicants. We hire officers with integrity. Integrity is paramount to the job of being a passing a police officer, in part because they are required to go into your homes. They see things and hear things that no one should ever hear or see. They keep that information to themselves unless revealing that information will bring a predator to justice. But given the national tone, frankly, ladies and gentlemen, it is becoming more and more difficult to hire good police officers nationally and here locally as well. In that regard, I would ask you uh, in your spare time, if you're interested in reading an article written by uh, Susan Sachs Clifford, she writes an article called The Labor Puddle. And the inference is back in the day, there was a labor pool, much deeper and much more vast. But we must ask ourselves a question as to why are there fewer men and women who are interested in a career of service. We're blessed with one young lady this morning who has been recognized with the Bernard K. Malekian Award, and she is deserving of that great recognition. But where are the multitude of children? Where is the future of law enforcement if we cannot recruit, hire, retrain, uh, train, and retain qualified applicants? Where will we be as a society as we move forward? You're here this morning to support the Pasadena Police Department. In a moment, in my remarks, I'm going to ask the officers to stand along with our employees and with our volunteers so that you get a physical image of, of those brave men and women. And maybe I can do that now. Would my officers and my volunteers and my employees please stand? And will my uh, retirees stand as well, please, and be recognized? I am proud to be a passing a police officer. Let me say that again. I am proud to be a passing a police officer. I am proud to serve with the greatest men and women in law enforcement that this nation has seen. Bar none, ladies and gentlemen, the passing a police department employees, volunteers, officers, supervisors, and executive staffs are in the top 1% of law enforcement. California leads the way in law enforcement and passing leads the way in California. That has been our tradition, that is our goal, that is our mission, and it is our focus. And we are maintaining those kind of proactive efforts. The men and women in uniform and in plain clothes this morning, they represent an extraordinary group of employees 
highly educated, highly motivated, dedicated, and courageous. Of the 383 employees that I have, more than 200 have post high school degrees, either a bachelor's, a master's, a PhD, or a JD. We are an educated force. We are contemporary. We move forward in a direction to serve you each and every day. But there are challenges that face us. While not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, we must continue to strive to stay diverse. Most recently, I sent a recruitment team back to Alarcon University in Mississippi to look for minority applicants. There should be a profound question there. Chief, why are we looking in Mississippi? Well, the truth of the matter is, in this case, Alarcon University has the largest sociology criminology program in the nation attended by minority students. I need to hire local men and women. As talented as the young people are in Mississippi, the truth is we need to focus more locally. And that's where you come in. Simply attending a breakfast, supporting your officers when you see them uh, in, in the community is appreciated. But I need you to take the next step. The discussion that you should be having in your family, in your churches, at the dinner table, on the couch on a Sunday afternoon, with your son or daughter, with your niece or nephew, is have you ever thought about being a passing a police officer? Not steering them away from public service, but encouraging them to attend and participate in public service. I routinely ask for the help of our great community, and we have success stories where we've hired local, regional, and, and young men and women from the state, and it's worked out well for us. I had indicated earlier that we've had a departure of about 17 officers that have left the Passing Police Department uh, seeking opportunities in other places. And the reasons really aren't important necessarily. Through the hard work of the city manager and I think the direction, the leadership of the mayor and the city council, I'm grateful for the compensation and the contract that they've awarded the Passing Police Officers Association. They've made us competitive. My officers don't seek to be rich. They just seek to do a good job and to be contemporary with their colleagues. And Mayor, thank you for that. That's a good step and in the right direction. But there's more to being a police officer than compensation. I mentioned some of the issues or some of the uh, attributes that you see daily in those officers. Something greater than themselves, something to serve with themselves. The Passing and Police Department enjoys a wonderful relationship with its union. And many of its uh, representatives are here this morning with us. And the Sergeants Association, Safety Non-Rep, and others that make up this great family of Passing and Police Officers, all dedicated to serve you. But we must stay focused on the future. We must be diverse in our ethnicity, in our gender, and focus commonly on the outcome of service to Pasadena. While I wish the officers well who have left this organization, I embrace with great enthusiasm the new men and women that are coming on board. Extraordinary individuals who are focused and passionate and have many, if not all, the attributes that we look for. We're a work in progress, we're a young workforce, and we will continue to serve this organization and this great community with exceptional policing services. The Passing the Police Department is as proactive in its enforcement efforts as it has ever been. Since January of 2014, we've taken several hundred guns off the street in this community. Gun control and gun issues are a separate topic and not necessarily for the discussion this morning. However, I use that as an example because in other departments and in other jurisdictions, law enforcement officers allegedly drive by seemingly not caring about the issues that face them. But not here in Pasadena. In Pasadena, these brave men and women 
Our supervisors remain proactive each and every day. You've heard me say this many times before, but it, it bears mentioning again. The issues that face us as a community, as a state, as a nation, will not be resolved by law enforcement. It's going to take a collective effort for us all to step up to address issues of homelessness or housing or jobs. It's not the city of Pasadena's job exclusively to figure out that very complicated dynamic. We'll have to come together as a society and a community to put our best step forward. But Pasadena is also involved in some of the business of our young people in the effort for prevention and intervention so that we can prepare them for the future so that they might be a passing a police officer or work for the FBI or attend uh, an extraordinary university, become a pastor or become a professor, a doctor, a lawyer, whatever the dreams might be. In Pasadena, we conduct many uh, interventions, youth interventions, which are done by the uniformed patrol officers each and every day. We continue to do preventative measures as well through youth programming. Our youth programs, in part supported by the foundation, thrive. They are as progressive and as participative as they've ever been. So moving forward, what I would ask of you is simply this. Be proud of your police department. I am. Be critical of your police department. I am as well. Hold us accountable so that we ensure that you're receiving extraordinary policing services. If you accept mediocrity, that's what we'll deliver. But if you accept excellence and expect nothing less, we'll deliver that as well. We need your support and your help in that effort, not only to recruit young men and women for our future, but also to publicly and openly thank the officers each and every day for what they do takes about a minute of your time to say thank you, and many of you have, and by your presence this morning, you do as well. I'd like to conclude my remarks by telling you again that I am proud to be a Pasadena police officer. I've served in this great profession for a very long time. <laughs> you thought I was gonna give you the actual year, so. <laughs> a little smarter than that, it's early. Uh, for about 35 years. And I'm as just excited to come and get into uniform today as I was a very long time ago. Partly me of that, I owe to my dear wife, Deborah. Thank you for your support, Deb. You're an extraordinary partner, an extraordinary friend, and I couldn't do this job without you. Thank you. <laughs> the Passing of Police Department exists to support you. We must find a way together, given the national concerns, that we put our best foot forward and support law enforcement. We can no longer be the brunt of jokes. We can no longer be hypercritical, unnecessary, warranted attacks. If you've not followed the local media, whether it's in the state of Washington, Nevada, or most recently in New York, Police officers are being ambushed, not every day, but one day. One attack on a police officer is an attack on society. Here in Pasadena, what we do see is that there's been an increase in uh, assaults against our police officers, and we're trying to figure out exactly why that's occurring. There are many challenges ahead of us, whether it's AB 109 or Prop 47, unintended consequences, and most recently, if you follow the news, uh, without much fanfare or drama, uh, the United States federal government just released 6,000 inmates into our community. It's not that they don't deserve a second chance. The question for us is, how will we continue to manage those challenges in front of us? Thank you for attending the 2015 Foundation and Chief's Breakfast. My heart goes out to Myron, our president, who is ill. And please keep him in your thoughts and your prayers. I would ask also that you pray for our foundation, that you give them strength and courage and wisdom to continue their great work uh, in our community. Lastly, I would ask for your prayers for my officers, that you keep them safe every day, 
that they come home and they celebrate birthdays and anniversaries and whatever special other events they might have in their lives. They're just like everyone else. They put their trousers on the same way we all do, one leg at a time. So congratulations on attending the breakfast this morning. I look forward to working with you in the future as we continue to move forward in a progressive uh, direction. Make no mistake about it, the Pasadena, city of Pasadena, our current leadership is extraordinary. It's reflective in the police department. We do a great job each and every day. And for the men and women of the Pasadena Police Department, I could, be, I could not be more proud to serve as your chief. Thank you for the privilege of allowing me to serve. Thank you for the privilege of uh, continuing to support uh, this great community with integrity, with courage, and with excellence. Thank you. So those were my prepared remarks. And I think at this time, I'm going to, uh, I have the privilege of introducing our uh, canines, uh, their handlers, uh, along with their partners. I think uh, Tom and Brock are making their way up. Uh, Officer Tom Brown. We have Officer uh, um, Matt Widger. And Steve Archon. So, Last year, the foundation's focus on the breakfast wa was a canine team, and I'm proud to tell you, and I would say again to the foundation and to the many members that supported us, we raised $75,000 last year in the support of a new dog and a new dog house, which is the car. Please give yourself a hand. Thank you. And in that effort, as promised, I will repurpose an officer so that we will have a fourth canine here in the near future. We've already ordered... Uh, the SUV, uh, so that's coming. Uh, we will have an officer that's selected here shortly, uh, and then we'll put that officer into training uh, and then uh, pair them up with a dog, and uh, we'll, be, we'll be able to put our fourth dog in service. Uh, many of the dogs that you see in front of, of you, Matt and his partner are service dogs. Uh, they, they find articles. Uh, they look for uh, people as well. Most recently, Matt was involved. Matt's over to my right, your left. Uh, Matt was involved in an extraordinary find where his partner uh, found a concealed weapon uh, that was hidden in the bumper of a car after uh, officers had stopped a, a gang member. So he's an extraordinarily uh, talented officer, and his partner is, is, is just a, a fresh pup, but really Matt and his partner are doing a great job. Over, go ahead, Tom. Sorry, we went out to evacuate as soon as we found the car. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, so uh, Tom's dog, Brock, is an uh, explosive detection dog. And I had, a, I had actually asked him to per, uh, put the, uh, the, your innate device uh, somewhere under your chair, but that didn't work out. Um, it could be. Oh, it could be. So maybe Tom, uh, maybe, Tom, you can have Brock start looking around. That thing said there's two. Okay, there's one more. So you might be the lucky winner of that. We're not sure yet. But uh, Matt, maybe uh, you and Steve can start to walk, walk your way into the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask my handlers to actually start to walk into the audience with their dog. Before you pet the dog, would you please check with the handler? And I'm not an experienced handler myself, but if you're going to pet the dog, would you extend your hand with the back side forward, please? Not yeah. This way. yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so uh, basically our canine core consists of uh, Belgian Malinoids. That's uh, Steve's dog and Matt's dog. And uh, Tom's dog, of course, is a German Shepherd. Uh, some would argue is the classic canine, uh, you know, uh, kind of insignia or image of, of the canine core. This year, as, um, as we continue to focus on the future, we are also working with the foundation to see if we can purchase uh, these emergency gators, uh, these all-terrain vehicles that we can use at the Rose Bowl in partnership with Daryl Dunn and George Cunningham and his crew so that we can get first responders to an area more, uh, much quicker. Uh, Tom frequently works the bowl with his dog uh, for bomb detection. Every, every time that there's a large gathering of individuals, I do have, of course, a concern for Homeland Security, but we do have an extraordinary group of, of men and women uh, that, uh, that are serving. So without further ado, I'm going to have Tom come up and explain in part what his dog does and, and finish the narration. Thank you.
Good morning. First, uh, as the chief did, I want to thank all of you for attending. Uh, the foundation for the last several years has uh, helped us out quite a bit in moving along in law enforcement, as the chief has talked about. Uh, from the equipment that we've been able to get, training that we've been able to uh, obtain and go to, has come through the foundation. Um, Susan's our main contact. I don't know where she got lost in the crowd here. Um, and she's and their group has helped us out tremendously. So thank you for that. I appreciate it and thank you all for attending. As uh, the chief said, our program started back in 1995. Hang on. Here. Someone want to come play with him? He's just that way. Four years old and he's got more energy than a four year old. <laughs> a lot of energy. So as like I said, our program started back in 1995 with two dogs. Um, traditional for us was the uh, patrol dog and the narcotics dog. And then last year came along through our UOC grant where we obtained Brock. Um, and Brock is, as the chief said, an explosives dog. And he's also, uh, we graduated in March of this year. He's also a patrol dog also. So he does both, uh, both fields as they have two. Um, our training comes from Adler Horse. It's a facility out in uh, Riverside that does our patrol, our narcotics, and our uh, explosives training. Uh, both of these dogs came from overseas. Brock didn't. I think as some of you here last year, Brock um, was actually born in the States, but his parents are from overseas. They, he came from a litter um, that came from overseas. So we have the, the three dogs that do that, and we're working towards the fourth. That dog that we're gonna bring on is also gonna be um, an explosives dog for us. And there's also gonna be some things, hopefully, as the chief and I have had some discussion in adding a little bit more responsibility to that, that dog. Because times have changed in what we're doing down around the Rose Bowl. And we do work through crowds, it's like walking through here. Um, hopefully it's gonna be a dog that can just wander through crowds and find things on uh, people walking with backpacks. If anyone's been around with uh, Boston Bomber and how they talk about that, we're hoping to get to that next step, um, to get us to be more proactive in keeping an eye on the groups that are around the Rose Bowl. Um, we, I recently went to a class with uh, Officer Mercado, who's in the back, just on suicide bombers on what, Monday? Monday we went. And it's amazing on the things that make the news even national news to what goes on here that you're hearing firsthand um, on explosions, finding bombs, finding um, different items like that. And with that, that's why I've been in conversation with the chief. So hopefully we do with our next dog step up to that. And there are some other equipment that we're looking to get um, to help us move on so that we make the people that come to the city, um, to the Rose Bowl and any other event that we have, because it's just not there. Work at the convention center, different things that have happened at City Hall, we're there for. Some people don't know we're there because we're there before and you don't see us. So we're hoping to make that a lot safer for the people that come into the community and that's what's helping us because obviously the city's growing. Um, was there any questions? I thought I'd open that up really quick. No one? No Q&A this year, okay. Um, so I'm gonna have Matt come up real quick and talk. There's one more incendiary device out there. So we're gonna go find it. Matt's gonna conversate with you for a little bit if you have any other questions for him and we're gonna go out and start searching. With him, the Brock's gonna be with you guys, going in between. Like Chief said, just you can stick out your hand. He's not gonna pay much attention to you. If he wants, he probably wanna be your friend and go home. So we'll be looking for the other one. Hey, Matt. Now, and it's funny, you bring that up and how you have to do it. It's, it's funny, we were in a training class and just kind of a joke. Um, we are looking, and basically what's out here right now are the items that people put in pipe bombs. Pipe bombs are the thing of uh, that what's going on right now. It's with the pressure cookers and everything else. Um, so we talked about it in the class with some bomb guys, and we said, how about if we just make one for training, you know, put a, take a pipe, put, put the stuff in it, put the, uh, put the fuse in it, put the caps on and go, and he goes, well, you just made a pipe bomb and then I'll have to arrest you. So <laughs> when we do it and we train with a lot of items and they'll be out in a little bit, um, they're what would make up that. So you're right, 
Commander, you're okay. But there is a fuse in there, so don't, uh, no lighters. Okay, here's Matt. Good morning. <laughs> Basically what Tom's going to be doing, he's going to just be doing a sweep there for explosives. Uh, Tom is trained on uh, approximately 30 different various odors, either uh, deck cord or black powder, various amounts. And he's just going out to searching if the dog locates any type of uh, odor. The dog's ability, his olfactory senses are approximately a million times better than ours, so it's amazing what the dog can smell. Oftentimes he can smell things uh, from several feet to 20 to 30, 40 feet, depending on uh, if we have wind. So what Tom's uh, doing right now is just watching the dog's behavior, looking to see if there's any, uh, anything that the dog's doing, a head snap, uh, some sort of behavior that's um, working towards an uh, area of the odor. And basically the dog gets into a, a scent cone and basically works it back to the highest concentration, which is the, uh, the actual odor. You can see he's working something over there. And then what he, what he does is when he alerts to an odor, he's a passive dog. Uh, he's going to sit and he's going to stare at the item. In this case, he's staring at Tom saying, hey, give me my toy, which is his toy. And there's two different alerts for, uh, for any detection, either active or passive. Obviously, we want a, an explosive dog to be passive because we don't want him to be hitting the, the bomb. Uh, my, mine is also passive. I've trained mine to be passive for narcotics. Steve's is uh, active. It's uh, an immense amount of training that's involved in keeping these dogs uh, trained either in patrol, article, explosives. I only have four different odors that I train on. Uh, cocaine, methamphetamine, marijuana, heroin, but you can see that Tom has over 30 uh, various odors that he trains his dogs on. I think uh, Lieutenant Ibarra wanted to speak. I thank you all for coming out here and uh, back in the police department. Good morning, I'm Lieutenant Ibarra with the Pasadena Police Department and also a liaison with the Foundation. Uh, one thing I want you to note, if you want to get in shape, be a canine handler because you can see it's a little difficult to control those dogs, but they're exceptionally skilled and very committed. They live with these dogs 24-7. Um, I think they're the replacement spouse sometimes, but that's okay. The um, reason I wanted to come up here is first I want to make sure that we're going to recognize our sponsors soon with Susan. Uh, but, but really to recognize that the efforts of these officers aren't just their individual training, that there is a lot of cross-training that happens on a weekly basis with both our federal, state, and local entities. Both these canines work regularly with LAPD and FBI, and I think recently with CIA. A lot of things that go on behind the scenes that you don't even know happens, but very committed to keeping our city safe. When we have large-scale events, especially the parade and the Rose Bowl and the soccer games and the football games, it's critical that we're there on scene. So one of the areas I want to emphasize is that as you see with your program, there's a vehicle with uh, Matt and the K-9, which is the MTV, and that's what we're really working towards this year for directing our funds. What this vehicle is capable of doing is actually transporting these K-9 officers, the K-9s, and as you can see these little running boards along the sides at the bottom, for additional officers, you can get up to eight officers quickly into a scene that may be very difficult for a uh, standard patrol vehicle to access. So it's an all-terrain vehicle, and, that, and our intent is to have them regularly on scene at our large-scale events. So when you're making donations today, and Susan is going to come up with a raffle, I hope that you consider that we're doing this for your safety. It's, it's critical that we continue to use tools that are out there for us and to advance our capabilities so that we can further provide greater safety and responsiveness to your needs. So thank you for supporting us, and Susan, if you please come up. Now I want to acknowledge our sponsors, our chief sponsor, the Terminum of Roses. Thank you very much. Our Commander Foundation sponsors, uh, Parsons and Castle Press. Thank you. And our Lieutenant Foundation sponsors, 
Las Encinas Hospital, Charles and Eileen Reed, John and Jenny Cushman, John Blanchard Company, Sandy Greenstein, Han and Han, and Sharp Seating. Thank you very much. Also, Marilyn, when's your birthday? April 1st. April 1st. Okay, Marilyn donates these centerpieces every year. So uh, they're available at each of the ta table. So whoever has the closest birthday to Marilyn's birthday on April 1st takes the centerpiece home. Okay? Could I ask all the foundation board members to come forward, please? God, I even have two minutes. This is great. <laughs> so just kind of line up down here. So... I want to give everybody give a round of applause to the foundation board. And I want to give a special uh, thank you to Tracy, who's probably my best right-hand person, Lieutenant Abaro. Where are you? And Sean, our auctioneer, who volunteers his time. And great job today, Sean. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next year.